So hi, and welcome to this edition of Wine Wedding Wednesday. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Happy to be here. It's Chris and Jeremy of The Bride Candy with our special guest today, Maria Martinez, environmentalist, and uh, my sister-in-law. Um, <laughs> so and we'll get to that in a second, but we're here to talk about weddings gone green, how you can have a greener wedding and a greener life, actually. So um, cheers. Thanks for being here, Maria. Cheers to that, guys. So glad to be able to join you today and chat a little bit about how uh, non-intimidating going green can be. <laughs> you know, it's funny because when we were writing the blog about um, going green for your wedding, um, you know, I was using the bathroom like all great ideas start, right? So I'm like, oh my God, I know exactly who I want to go for Wedding Wednesday. The next one, he's like, who? I was like, Maria, hello. Like, you know, we had asked you for advice for the last blog, which was amazing. Um, so you are the perfect, by the way, for everyone out there. She's also a Yale graduate um, and is just a total badass. So she's the perfect person to go to for this type of thing. It's amazing. So I'm super excited. So first off, Maria, before we you know talk about anything else, uh, what kind of wine are you having? I'm having a little rosé from France. Uh, it's, mm. We're going through wine here like water, so switching <laughs> often. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. I know uh, we definitely have been. Uh, I really <laughs> love some of the wines that you shipped me for my birthday. And I was looking for tonight for the Apasiamento that I've never had mm -hmm. before, but that was such a great wine. Unfortunately, they were out of it at Total Wines. So uh, next time around, I'll have to pick it up. But um, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your path to environmentalism and sort of how it's affected you on a personal note and a professional note? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me join you guys. It's it's really exciting to, to be part of your Bride Candy ongoing series, um, and I love you both, so I'm just excited to be here. Oh. The environmental work, I mean, I'm from Florida, as you know, just like you, um, Jeremy, and the impacts of climate change and, you know, the, the impacts of humans on the environment was just omnipresent throughout my life, you know, in Miami. Um, and so I grew up kind of being a little bit hyper aware perhaps and I, I stumbled into a major in college called sustainability studies um, that really challenged me to kind of think about the impact humans have on the environment and, and the way that we um, shape the economy and you know business and so for me it was really interesting and captivated my my attention and a couple of years later and a couple of degrees later I'm here kind of committed full time to to doing um, everything I can to advocate for, you know, really good policy to keep us sustainable and in protecting Earth, uh, but growing and thriving as a as a uh, country and as a world. So, yeah. And it's amazing the kind of work that you do. And that's something that also trickles down into your personal life as well and the kind of choices that you make with just living every day with the kind of everyday practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And we'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, but, you know, here at the Bride Candy, we like to talk about weddings. And so that is the reason for the season. <laughs> yes. And, and so, you know, one thing that Chris and I have been thinking a lot about with our wedding is, you know, first of all, just how much goes into it. It's funny, you know, even on the vendor side, you would think that we would have this down pat, but we're continuously surprised by how much <laughs> extra there is. I can tell you, I, I think that we've developed an uh, like just such a, a greater appreciation for what uh, brides and grooms everywhere are going through. And, you know, there's so many choices and so many things that are at the top of your mind when you are planning a wedding. Um, I know that for you, uh, making sustainable and green choices was something that was really important when you were planning your wedding. So I was hoping that you would talk with us a little bit about um about your wedding and the choices that you made around it yeah absolutely and I'm, I'm very excited to kind of share my journey and i will say that for many people uh it's important to get married and be with the person you love but it's also important not to go broke while you're doing it so i hope to pepper in some advice about how to not feel like having a great wedding like i'm getting super crazy 
Uh, because sometimes people feel like they have to make choices or sacrifices or you know, um, pay a premium for green products. And so, um, as you know, I got we got married. Tim and I got married while I was in grad school, and so. Um, being thrifty was definitely part of the equation for us just because I was in school, you know. Um, and the first thing we did, I think the first thing we thought about was location, you know, like most people do. What, Where should we get married? And I think the things we thought about were where are the people that we love based, you know, and, and what place captures our spirit as a couple and our identity and, and is significant to us. And um, I think the intersection of those two things was Gainesville, Florida, which is where we met and very lucky where your parents, my wonderful in-laws are as well. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that it was easy for them to get to to the wedding. And honestly, it was such a blessing to have mom nearby to, you know, go scope out the locations and um, from far away send me pictures and video that she had seen, you know, a couple of weekends. <laughs> Um, throughout the whole spring before we got married. She was an amazing accomplice for that. So we ended up choosing a garden in Greenfield called Kanapaha Gardens. And it's a, a beautiful outdoor location. Okay. Which yeah. Honestly, meant that I had to do very little to decorate it. I mean, it was just so stunning on its own that um, the lift there is super light. And also, as somebody that loves the environment and being outdoors and hiking and all that, I just felt like a garden would be a beautiful place to have a ceremony and then, uh, you know, move into the indoor facility for the kind of after party dancing portion of it. Um, so that was, that was how we landed on location. And um, I can get into like some of the details of the other stuff if that's helpful, but um, it's, it was, it was definitely a identity choice to be outside, but, you know, we looked at indoor kind of, um, chapel looking places considered you know, you know churches that have that beautiful um regal look to them but ultimately landed on a bamboo garden within the kanapaha gardens location and it's really beautiful yeah absolutely it, it, honestly i i know it wasn't a church but there was something sacred really about being surrounded by all that nature and that beautiful bamboo um, I, to the audience, I don't know if you've ever been in a bamboo garden before, but it is really just incredible how towering it is. And then also it makes this beautiful rustling sound as the wind moves through it, that it doesn't detract from, you know, whatever's going on at all, but it really makes you feel like you're rooted in nature. It's, it's a, it was a beautiful choice for the ceremony. Really beautiful. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like um, part of the venue portion of being green, I mean, of course, picking a local wedding location, staying close to your home base or where a lot of your guests are to kind of reduce the traveling associated with going to your wedding. That's, you know, a big um, green measure that you can take. Um, you can also pick a venue that's dedicated to sustainability within their core mission and that kind of thinks about environmentally friendly practices as part of the way that they run their business. So maybe they, you know, source their electricity from renewable energy sources or have like an on location solar panel that they draw energy from, or you know, they're really thoughtful about recycling and composting options for your your um, event, which is really important as well. Um, and you know, having having a, a venue that thinks about those things makes it super easy for you to feel confident that you know, going going to them as your venue means that there's already this built in, you know, the access to your practices for your wedding day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get into it. Let's talk about some of these things going point by point down what people can do yeah. to to make these better choices. And so you you just mentioned venue is is one that's at the top of the mind. I know here in Miami at the high end, the one hotel on South Beach uh, does a really good job around sustainability. But Maria, you'd also mentioned things like, you know, uh, agritourism or farms that may also be good choices in, in, in that sort of same vein. Yeah, definitely. The great thing about using locations like farms and other local venues like that is that they, maybe they grow their own food, which can be part of their catering options, right? Using locally grown um, vegetables and even, uh, you know, whatever protein resources you have, if there's a way to have that local access to that farm, you already have a great connection to a, a lower carbon footprint meal. Like a, like a vineyard too, right? And a, that beautiful 
um, uh, amazing rustic feel to them, which is super beautiful. Um, so definitely recommend a farm. We, we went with the garden, but I think the farm was a high, high up on our list to also explore, and we ultimately just couldn't find one that was super accessible and that was available for that weekend, but um, I'm, I'm certainly, certainly a huge fan of farm weddings. So, I guess the same thing goes for like a vineyard wedding, because then, you know, if you're having a vineyard wedding, then you're getting the, you know, the alcohol or the wine locally sourced. <laughs> Um, I know in Connecticut, there's a lot of like amazing rest. Like there was this vineyard that we had our um, engagement party in. And of course it was wine, but then there's also like a restaurant like right there. So catering um, would yeah, also yeah. be a good idea because there's so many amazing places around that. So to really help that out for sure. Um, and it's gorgeous. I mean, I'm with you like outdoors weddings. Like those are my favorite. Um, farm, beautiful, different, like it's, it's trendy too, to be green and not just green, but just being out in a garden or a different venue than what you would expect. So it's a really good idea. You know, uh, you, it's not just us that say that, you know, Arlene is saying, yes, vineyards for the wine. <laughs> we agree with you, Arlene. That <laughs> Cheers, honey. To go. Cheers to Cheers. you. Yeah. I can see a vineyard being a great location also where you're, your wedding favor could be your favorite bottle of wine. And that's a great way to, you know, give your guests something that they love. I think that there are a lot of people that fall victim to wedding favors that are um, like single use plastic disposable items that are hard to carry in planes or are one time use. And uh, vineyards are a great place to negotiate, you know, maybe a couple of bottles of wine for your table as a gift or something like that. So that's another perk that I can think of for sure. Yeah, it's a great idea. How about what are some other like unexpected things that um, can be wasteful for weddings that you came across while planning yours? Honestly, one of the biggest sources of waste that we get very sentimental about, I think, is the invites and all of the paper goods associated with weddings. I mean, there's something really special about sending out, you know, your big notice on a very regal looking, beautiful craft paper or something like that. But when you start adding up, you know, the save the date and then the invite and the paper with the instructions and the parking and the, you know, hotel info, suddenly you have like reams and reams and reams of paper that you're sending out to your guests. And not only is it, you know, a, a source of paper waste, but you're also going to spend a pretty penny mailing all that out. So I think some really great options that have come out in the last couple of years to kind of reduce the paper waste associated with with uh, your wedding invites is having a wedding website that you can really customize and personalize and add your beautiful engagement photos to. You can add maps and interactive kind of pieces and, and uh, elements to it that your guests can interact with. And, you know, you can do your registration right from your website um, for your wedding registry. Um, you can have your guests confirm, you know, through the internet whether they're coming or yeah. not. And it just reduces a lot of that, the stuff getting lost in the mail or not arriving or people moving and things never making it. Um, and so that's a, that's a really great way to kind of reduce that. You can you can be super practical and and send a a beautiful email with a link to the website and just forego paper products altogether. Um, you could also send out a postcard, right, with the kind of save the date, and then in the back direct people to head to your wedding website for competition on our and everything, which is actually what we did. We created a beautiful website and a, a small postcard just for the sake of having that paper because we did have a lot of older, more traditional guests that you know would have missed that, but it minimized the amount of paper we used. Um, and then I think there are people that get really sentimental and, and feel really strongly about like the beautiful impact of paper. And then I think in that case, there are plenty of options that you can consider um, like recycled paper, compostable uh, material. Um, there are even papers that have interesting features like little seeds built into the invites. And once your guests you know, come to the wedding and the wedding goes, you actually just bury it in your backyard and it grows beautiful flowers. So it's, it's wow. a, yeah, it's a totally interesting and dynamic way to take something that usually goes into the trash can or in the recycling bin after you're done and turns into something beautiful for your guests. So that's, you know, those are some options to stay away from the, all the paper um, of invites and, and the menus and all that kind of stuff. And you can um, create, for example, for the menus, 
uh, one thing we did at the bar is just set up a beautiful canvas that uh, we had, you know, handwritten a menu into and bar options. And then that way you reduce the number of like little place cards and little menu papers that you leave on the table. So that's one surprising way that we, we end up creating a lot of waste on, on our wedding day without intending to. Yeah, I mean, all of those are amazing ideas. I really love the seed paper yeah. idea. My gosh, do you like? Do you know what that's called, or or um, do, do you? Yeah, know I know there's, there's, with it? there's a company called Botanical Paperworks that kind of embeds the seeds in there, and so they print using a plant-based ink, um, and then you you can send it out, and it includes little instructions in the back, you know, in the back of the invite on how to how to basically turn it into a beautiful flower bed. Wow, that is really, that, that sounds amazing. Uh, Arlene says that the last three weddings she shot have had evites. It's definitely a great eco alter alternative. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, Arlene, absolutely. You know, actually, Chris and I haven't sent out our, our invites yet, um, but uh, we actually are using some, we will be using some repurposed things in our invites. And then uh, also we are going to be using a wedding website as well. So it's it makes something it super easy. Yeah, I, yeah. To make everything organized, it does eliminate a lot of the back and forth. You can just capture so much all at once, you know, and have that one uh, source for everything. Yeah. And you can personalize it so much. I mean, you guys take amazing photos. So I can just imagine your website being full of very photogenic stills of you too. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Well. I'm just kidding. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, so what else can can we do? I mean, another really interesting one is the dress and the rings, right? So, let's start with the rings. I think that there's a very powerful sentimental value to your engagement ring and your wedding bands, but um, they, of course, sometimes have problematic sourcing of where the metals and minerals come from. So um, one thing you can do is actually use family heirlooms, you know, get, get your great grandmother or your grandmother or your mother's rings and um, have that be part of your engagement story in your wedding, to have, you know, to incorporate those family heirloom jewels um, as part of your wedding day. Another option, so beautiful. Sorry, babe, you cut out there. I'm sorry, I said, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I think it's really beautiful. Like yeah. I, I it's a sentimental thing to it, um, for sure. I think the other thing that you can do um, is take old jewels, maybe not not your grandmother's wedding rings or your, their engagement rings, but just old jewels that you have sitting at home that you know you're kind of over, or it's a little bit out of style and fashion. And you can take those to a local jewelry shop and have your jeweler kind of work with you to design your perfect ring and have it be whatever you want it to be, but using recycled metals, which is another great way to kind of think about reducing the the um, harmful like social and environmental impacts of mining for gold and, and you know, diamonds and other gemstones. Um, and then there's also a lot of really great companies that you can just buy sustainable jewelry from. Brilliant Earth is one of them. Um, there's there's a couple out there that do a really good job at thinking about the supply chain. Um, Ingle and Road is another great one, and so you can shop online and have the certainty of knowing that they've you know put a lot of thought into where their materials are coming from, and they're getting a, a fair share of of um, profit to their you know, miners. And it feels nice to not feel like you're creating a lot of environmental. Um, waste and destruction by by wearing your beautiful bling, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I I think that that is really something that that a lot of people don't think about, right? It's just like you know, it's this rock, it's pretty, it's shiny. You know, I want it. <laughs> exactly. But but you know, it, it's so amazing to actually have that kind of story with it, and how much more meaningful something would be when you do know that you can sort of wear this thing guilt guilt free, or you know, as guilt free as possible. Yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned dresses too. Yeah, uh, dresses are really interesting. I think a lot of brides get really attached to the idea of buying this, like their fairy tale, like dream dress, of course. And it, it is a really big part of how we feel like complete that day, if you will. Um, but there's there's something to be said about buying a really expensive dress that you wear one time and then you know shove into a closet, never to be seen again. Um, so something I did, for example, was uh, track down a dress that I really liked um, and just like look on online on different like used websites for 
um, dresses like nearly newlywed, um, like newly newly um, where a lot of brides put their dresses that they've already used up for second second uh, hand market. And I actually found the exact dress that I wanted, bought it from this um, wonderful um, woman who was so pleased with herself that her dress was having a second life that she asked me to take pictures and then send her like a little blurb, you know, months later about, you know, how the dress um, went, you know, went like what kind of adventure we had together. And she just kind of wanted to live vicariously through me again. And, and she, you know, once I reached out to her with pictures and told her that, you know, the dress made me feel like a magical fairy that day. She was like, I'm so glad that my dress like had this other life with you. And I hope that you do the same. You give the dress another life and we can just keep passing down this this beautiful dress that I mean, we wore it once each. So it was in perfect condition. You know, we laundered it and everything. But like I said, I, I thought about saving some money and I definitely saved a couple hundred dollars from the, the sticker price of that dress. And, you know, I reduced the, materials I use because I just did a secondhand dress. Um, so that was my my way of kind of approaching that. I know that there are also um, Tux and other dress websites where you can rent single use um, for, or like you, you determine the amount of time, you know, you can rent it for three days, a week, two weeks, etc. cetera. Um, I know black, the Black Tux is a Tux rental. I think Jeremy, that's what that's what you ended up using for a wedding if, I'm, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the black tux. They make it really easy, honestly. You know, they, they ship it to you. They ask you all your sizes and, you know, then you try it on. If it doesn't fit, you send it back, you know, and they, they give you something that fits a little bit better. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of options, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's it's really style, easy. Just as a style shoot with, with, uh, with them, like they, they gave us a suit. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was like nice. this burgundy. I was like, oh my God, that's great. And <laughs> it was a rental company. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> so, um, you know, just because you're renting something doesn't mean, or your dress was beautiful or you're getting something that's like, you know, secondhand doesn't mean that it's not any less beautiful than those dresses you find from Davis Bridal or from any other store. So that's a really good, yeah, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of materials go into making all these really fine garments. And so it's if we can find a second life for them, even if you buy your own dress from the store, um, and there are some really sustainable tailors out there like Adele Weschler and Lindy Daniel, they produce some really great um, sustainable gowns. You could also give your gown a second life, you know, put it up on, on Nearly Newlywed or, you know, another used uh, wedding dress website and see what kind of second life it gets. Um, I think Chris, we had discussed maybe giving you my dress to, to bring to life as part of a, of a shoot, which would have been a, a fun way to kind of like preserve the memory of my dress. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, we always have used for. I, I actually have a wedding dress upstairs. He does. <laughs> I do. And you know, the funny thing about it is that I have given a lot of life to it in the sense of like we've used it for not just for fun because I have it and I joke around. I've done little videos and stuff, but uh, we've also done shoots with it. Um, I've yeah. actually used it throughout, and I've had that dress for a very long time, and I've used it quite a few times. I don't want to, like, part with it. Just because I've used it, I think that, like, if I ever had, like, a storefront with, like, a glass or something, I would, like, have it on a mannequin or something, but it's just so beautiful. And the thing is, is, like, I kept up with it. So sometimes when you have a wedding dress, and this is something for, um, you know, brides that are getting married to keep in mind, that don't just stuff it in a closet because it will yellow. And even if you have intentions of like reusing it or giving it to your daughter uh, or whoever, you know, make sure that it it's like airtight in something or that you like, you know, you get it dry clean because what happens a lot of times with dresses is that we have the best intentions. We're gonna sell it, we're gonna donate it, but then we kind of forget about it. We leave it in the closet and we look at it like, oh, it's so pretty my wedding. And then you just stuff it right back and then next thing you know, when you look, it's like yellow. And then you think you wanted this dress forever and you had intention of maybe framing it or keeping it. And then it just kind of like loses it. Like you're like, oh my God, I can't even do anything with it. It ends up in the Goodwill, um, which isn't a, a bad thing necessarily because then maybe somebody else will take that dress. Uh, but for sure, like if you have the intention of, you know, either reusing your dress or giving it to someone else or donating it, just make sure that you get it washed, you know, like pretty soon after and just try not to forget about it. And it's, it, you're right, it's a beautiful garment. Um, you know, some people, I think we think we wanna keep it forever, 
But then once, you know, things are always changing, styles are always changing. I mean, be, you know, before everyone was strapless, then now everyone is back, sleeves are back in, you know, but that doesn't yeah. mean that 10 years from yeah. now, it's going to be in. I mean, not to say that you can't take a piece of the lace and use it on, maybe if you have a daughter, she might want that, or son might want it somewhere in his blazer, but it's a really good idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, we should not be attached to stuff. Take a million sexy, beautiful, like amazing photos of your dress and then pass it on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we do not need another bag of crap sitting in our closet, I think, anyways. That's the <laughs> truth, honestly. <laughs> so what else? There must be other things that we can do to have a green wedding. I mean, let's talk about food. <laughs> it's of definitely course. a really important part of weddings. I, for one, thought about food and music and drinks as being the staples to keeping guests happy. I think if people are fed and, you know, a little bit uh, tipsy and having, you know, a good time dancing and listening to music, they're going to be very happy regardless of how long you take um, taking your photos or, you know, how long the toasts are, as long as they have some food in their belly and something to keep you know, chugging, uh, they're going to be really happy. So, um, but food is also a really great source of carbon emissions. Um, the transportation of food, the growing of food, I mean, it all involves a lot of resources. There are certain um, food items that take a lot more water and a lot more resources to grow. And so I was, I kind of approached the food in a, in a very thoughtful way. Um, and in addition to the sustainability question, I'm also gluten and dairy intolerant, and um, my beautiful mother-in-law, Kathy, is also, you know, has some food allergies, and I have a lot of friends who are vegan, so this confluence of, like, food restrictions and sustainable food options and um, also making sure that it was a really tasty menu was, was definitely a challenge, um, and the way that I approached it was I started just calling local farms in Gainesville and local catering companies and just asked them straight up, you know, do you work with local farms? Do you source local produce? You know, can you work with me if you don't do that already to secure, um, you know, vegetables from the local farmer's market, for example? Are you willing to go the extra mile? Or um, in my in my personal case, I, That's my, by the way. I really yeah. really love, my husband and I really love lamb, as you know, we just, there's just no <laughs> way to convince him not to have lamb in the wedding. And so, um, I thought it was going to be nearly impossible to find lamb in Gainesville, Florida, because I mean, who grows lambs in Florida? Um, but I worked with my caterer who is a godsend and she started calling, you know, local farms up. I think she, her radius was like 50 miles or less. And she just called every farm that she could think of that, you know, potentially might grow chickens and farm and uh, lamb. And she, you know, she was an amazing and very, kind person doing all that work for me but she, she made it work you know we had chicken and we had lamb and we had this like beautiful veggie moroccan stew which was perfect for the vegans and then for the carnivores they just added the chicken and the lamb on top of that beautiful veggie moroccan stew which was perfect um the the carb if you will the starch was rice which is a super friendly um you know accessible food for a lot of people. Rice was actually the only thing I couldn't find local because we just don't have rice patties in Gainesville. <laughs> but, you know, all of the veggies were local, all of the meats we use, the cheeses for our herbs, um, the, the ingredients for the dressings and the salad and the bread, all of that came from a local bakery. And so um, just having a conversation with your caterer is a really good way to, to explore what the options are, you know, and, Another good way to think about reducing your, your footprint and the waste of food is the materials that you use to eat and serve the food. So whenever possible, I always suggest that people think about renting glassware, you know, or China um, from a company that can handle all of that. They can, you know, deliver it to your location, you use it, and they take it away and worry about cleaning, which is actually so much easier for you. Um, and that's a, it, it looks elegant and beautiful, but it also reduces a lot of the waste associated with disposable, you know, serving utensils um, and serveware. But I think there are occasions, I've had friends who have had weddings in locations where it just really wasn't practical to have that service or, you know, the glassware for a number of reasons. And there's also a lot of options to use materials um, in the disposable 
um, for, of the disposable variety that are super environmentally friendly. Like, like there's these beautiful plates made of palms, like palm leaves, dried palm leaves, which I don't know if you've seen these, but they're thick and they're beautiful. It's actually the plates we use for our engagement. Um, I was going to say the, the rehearsal dinner. The rehearsal dinner, yes, thank you. It actually we, went really well with. with okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Which were also locally. The roses were locally grown. Um, but the I remember the, like, it's not your typical, it's it's nicer than what you would have, like, for those of you who are not, like, you know, like, environmentalists like me, but, like, <laughs> um, it's better than, like, your plates, like, plastic plates and your plastic forks. It actually looked really, really nice. It, like, it was, like, a hand. wood... And it just looked really nice at the table. Um, my future mother-in-law picked up the colors, so it actually went really well with it. And it was actually nice to be able to be like, oh, I can just throw this out and not worry about, you know, harming the environment. And it looked great. Actually, look, like I said, it would look, it looks it looked better than having like plastic plates and like plastic forks and knives. So it's a it's a big, I would say definitely do it for sure. Can. Yeah, for sure. it's a really nice rustic look. Um, to use the pressed palm leaves. And the great thing about that is when you're done, it's completely compostable along with the foods that you know might be left over on them. And so you're not polluting the landfill with little microplastics and putting a leaf that is already dried back in there. So that's another good way to think about it. I, I you know I spent a lot of time thinking about the food and those are some of my my tips and tricks for trying to make it a little bit greener and more, more sustainable. And I think as a general rule, staying local with everything is is always a good way to reduce your carbon footprint. You know, things travel less. Um, and you're also supporting the local economy, which is really great. I think all the small businesses in the community would really appreciate when, when um, you know, wedding wedding uh, parties and brides, you know, choose them. And they know the community best, and they usually have a really good relationship with their vendors as well, which is, you know, an added bonus. Cheers to that. Cheers Absolutely. To that. <laughs> I think food is something that I, I think people don't, I don't know about, I think most people don't think about, right? Like, I, I, you know, you think you would get your caterer, you think it's, you know, no biggie or whatever, but then you don't actually think about all that. Another one is like flowers, right? Like I think like our conversation about flowers really like kind of helped me see like as a floor designer, there's certain, there's certain things that like a client may want that it's almost impossible to make environmentally friendly unless, you know, flowers are um, locally sourced. But one thing to stay away from is like foam. Floor foam is like the biggest enemy um it's like it's like a, i have a love hate relationship with chloroform because it just it like if you want something over the top like it's it's a thing to go to but it is extremely wasteful you can't reuse it because once it's used the bacteria from the flower stays in there so even if you try to reuse it um it's gonna like make your flowers wilt and die um also like the plastic plates that go like if you're gonna have like a big arrangement, there's like a plastic plate and the tape that goes in it. Um, you know, with the plates, like we always try to reuse it. Um, yeah, we save like a buck or two, it's not a big deal, but it's also like, you know, we try not to be feel so guilty yeah. about it. Like, um, so I think if you are trying to go environmentally friendly with your flowers, um, I would very I would stick away from like, you know, very structured type things and just go like in your wedding, there was like the um the the mason jars and the flowers in there and that's honestly the safest and if you're gonna reuse your flowers that's the best also because if you put something in a floral foam it does not last as long as it would in just like water and um you know so really stay away from foam and honestly away. bud vases and candles on tables look so romantic it's really and so nice yeah. you know it's there's nothing, I mean, I, I I would offer them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then, but, you know, the other thing too is, you know, one of the, the things that is, is sort of the double-edged sword is with foam, you kind of need it when you have these outdoor weddings and these really delicate flowers that you're using, like, you know, ranunculus or something else, you know, so if you're willing to have a little bit of flexibility with the kind of flowers that you're choosing, um, you know, you can actually go foamless. There's some flowers that actually can survive for a very long time out of water. Out of water. I mean, if it's not in direct heat, one thing that another way to do it foamless is with chicken wire. Mm -hmm. Um, because chicken wire, you use it like as a mold and then you like stuff the flowers and the greenery in there. 
Now, I know that chicken wire may seem very wasteful because it's fire and, you know, but most floor designers like myself and the ones that I know, we reuse it all the time. I mean, it's a little work, you know, not to say it's, it wouldn't be easy just to throw it out. But first of all, it does get pricey after a while. And honestly, like, I mean, I don't, I try to do like at least... <laughs> like try to reuse as much as I can from the stuff that I have. Honestly, you have to take everything out of the chicken wire anyway, because otherwise it's too much. It's yeah, too big it's too to throw big. out all as one piece. So, you know, it's yeah. if, if you if you yeah. cleaned it anyway, why not reuse it? And guys, I'm gonna make a plug for the afterlife of your flowers. I think that there's so much that you can do besides, you know, just abandon them in the trash can of your venue. Um, a, you can take them home, of course, and just enjoy them or give them to your guests to take home, which some of my guests just walked away with the entire vase and like all of my decorations. <laughs> we had to hold them back from doing that, but you can do that. I mean, that could be part of their favors just to say at the end of the night, you know, take the beautiful flowers with you. Um, but you can also donate them to nursing homes, hospitals, shelters, places that would really, you know, benefit from a beautiful uplifting floral arrangement. Um, of course, in COVID world, we have to be careful about where we send things, especially nursing homes where, you know, they're very delicate and susceptible to transmission of disease. But but generally, there's some really good organizations out there that can help coordinate these donations, um, like Metals with Purpose, Philanthropy, and Random Acts of Flowers are just a couple that come to mind that, you know, team up with local nonprofits and organizations um, and receive your flowers. Sometimes they even do the labor of picking up flowers from the venue from you so that that just eliminates the labor from your party you basically just have to coordinate with them that you want to donate them they take care of picking them up and then they donate them to wonderful places and sometimes you get pictures from really happy recipients who you know you brighten their day with your wedding flowers and they tend to be really gorgeous breathtaking arrangements so it's certainly very welcome um and i will say too like Picking what's in season, I'm sure, Chris, you could talk a lot more about this, but yeah. uh, a lot, to, Chris, to Jeremy's point of being flexible with your flowers, uh, I worked with a local farm, the same farm that provided my veggies, and kind of said, hey, I want to buy some flowers for you for the wedding too, and here are the colors that I like and the kind of theme we're going for, and then just kind of trusted them to pick local seasonal flowers to fill that criteria. Um, and that also eliminates like having to transport and import flowers from exotic places, right? right. So that's another thing and for Chris. You're yeah. expert in what's in season. <laughs> advise people much better than I can. Well, I think, you know, to piggyback on that, also keep in mind the date that you choose. Because, you know, we're in Florida, so pretty, I mean, but even then you chose your, your wedding was in March. So it's spring. So I remember you had tulips, you have ranunculas. Um, I think you had some roses. Not roses not yes, snap dragons. Um, those are very spring like flowers. Um, so keep in mind like your day. If you're gonna, you know, in December, you're probably you're never really gonna have that much. Um, I mean in Florida it's a little different. Um, but you know, if you are up in the northeast, it's gonna be a little harder for you if it's in um, you know, the winter or anything like that. But there's also dried flowers, right? There's also dried use. flowers. They're beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, if you're having a winter wedding, you could do like sticks, like beautiful sticks um in a vase. That means that there is no really no waste because you're recycling it. Mm -hmm. I actually used to do that, like all like I when I was in Connecticut, I would grab um like I would go to the parks and they would clean it up, you know, but before I, they got a chance to clean it up, I would take all these branches and make centerpieces out of them. Um, and then there's no foam, there's no glue, there's nothing. You just put it in a tall vase. Um, I reused those tall vases multiple times. I reused the, the actually the branches a bunch of different times, you know. Um, so it's a, it's a really good option as well. So just keep that in mind season for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there anything else we're we, I was going to say, we've got to get into honeymoon before we wrap up because that's certainly a great place to think about being sustainable. So, so let's get into it. So where did you go for your honeymoon? So we went to Scandinavia. We did a, a little tour of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. And it was a beautiful kind of cultural experience. Um, as you know, the Scandinavians have a very progressive kind of lifestyle and so that was really enjoyable because 
it's a very far location. We, of course, had to fly, but one of our um, wedding registry gifts was um, we asked our, our guests, we asked our, our guests if they wanted to to help offset our travel. And that just means that, you know, we calculated how many miles the trip was going to be, how many, uh, how much carbon emission was associated with that as part of the flight. Um, and then we bought offsets to help offset the emissions that would be released with our with our travel. And, you know, we chose an organization that um, plants trees and, you know, they do their own equivalent of how many miles traveled and how many trees would compensate that. But that's a really great way to kind of offset your travel and, and still have the fun, like, international experience but not feel super guilty about it and then when I, never, we were, I never thought that that was a thing yeah and it's actually much more affordable than you think i think for our trip i mean two of us obviously flew um to um scandinavia which is a couple thousand miles from here i don't know the exact miles off the top of my head but it was it was under 200 dollars, i think to offset that so it's not it's not totally insane. And, and like I mentioned, it was part of our wedding registry. So we, we had our guests gifting us that and it was pretty great to do. Um, and then the other thing is while we were in Scandinavia, we were really conscious about doing a lot of public transit when possible, which in addition to being um, you know, lower carbon emission than taking a private car or taxi, is also a great way to get to meet people and learn the culture and kind of experience the way that the the country does their public transit. I mean, Sweden had these amazing light rail um, cars that kind of just like zipped through the street that you know I would love to have here in the States, but it's a great way to just experience the culture so much more deeply. Um, and then we took a bunch of walking tours in every major city we went to. There are, the, there are these amazing things called free walking tours um, and they're organized by locals. Um, Every major city we went to, Stockholm, Oslo, Malmo, they all had them. And it's a couple of you know, locals who sign up to give tours and they don't really charge you. You just kind of give them a tip at the end based on what you thought of the of the tour. But they are amazing because you know, they know the city super well. And I got a, I got a good cardio workout, burned some calories, saved the emissions. And you know, on top of that, just had a really good time meeting a bunch of locals. So. Just think about what kind of options you can you can uh, participate in while you're in your wedding, your honeymoon location. So I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about where you're going, but I'd be happy to kind of explore sustainable options for you while you're there. Uh, sure. We're definitely going to hit you up on that offer. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. I love so many of these ideas. I know that for us, um, it's really important for, for us to have that taste of local culture. And I know that we're definitely going to spend some time getting our hands on some local wine and some local food Ooh. and definitely some local flowers wherever we go. Oh my God. So yes. yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting. You I know? want to see the flower of the world. <laughs> and drink Chris, the wine. you've got to go to Barcelona where they have that beautiful outdoor flower market year round. I mean, it's just stunning. The entire plaza. Oh, uh, uh, see what I did there? Alan? Aza, the entire plaza. Ah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. I really want to go to Holland too. Like all the, a lot of tulips are there. Oh my god! It's so oh, for the tulip festival. Yeah, for it's sure. just like I, yeah. So, so we're going a little long on time, but I, I definitely wanted to make sure that we hit this one last point, um, which was, you know, of course, being green for your wedding is a great idea, but it's one moment in time. How can we really be green sort of in, in our lives in general? Yeah, this is a really good question. And I think that people get very intimidated, as I mentioned at the top of the hour of, of making choices that feel expensive or complicated or burdensome. And I think that the number one tip that I can share to be you know more green in your life is to be prepared. Um, if you're prepared, you can probably reduce the majority of the circumstantial trash that you can create as you go about your day. And little simple things add up really quickly. You know, I'm a huge fan, as you know, of a reusable water bottle, and I take my coffee coffee mug with me everywhere I go. And so um, basically every cafe store that I've ever been to is very happy to fill my mug instead of wasting one of their cups, um, which is, you know, one way to do it. I take... Uh, washable and reusable little sandwich bags in case I want to buy, you know, a croissant or, you know, a piece of bread or a sandwich or a goodie. I just kind of 
give them my bag so that they don't have to waste materials there. Um, you can kind of travel with those things in your bag with you. As you know, the, the reusable shopping bags are so ubiquitous nowadays. You can even buy them at the store, um, you know, while you're there. But traveling with them in your car, for example, just leaving them in your trunk and having them handy. Um, if you want to be, you know, even more hardcore, you can take your own kind of mason jars and glass containers and other reusable containers to refill at stores um, and just avoid using the plastic that a lot of things come packed in. You know, I know that um, there are lots of grocery stores where you can now start just like pulling down on the receptacle that just dispenses the dry goods for you, for example, or um, I know Whole, Whole Foods has the orange juice kind of uh, maker that you just like bring your own glass into and then just they just dispense the fresh juice right into that um, and I'd say if you just want to be curious and you want to learn more and you want to do it in a really approachable and simple way there are two people that I think do a really fantastic job at making uh, a low uh, and zero carbon lifestyle super accessible and that's Bea Johnson who is the queen of all things zero waste. She just kind of has taken every aspect of her life and shown you how you can reduce, reduce the waste and the emissions associated with that. Um, and Lauren Singer, who is a really famous kind of uh, activist who has managed to fit all of the trash from you know the past five years of her life into this tiny, tiny mason jar. Um, so she's done a really good job at thinking about how you can reduce your waste in every way possible. And it truly is possible if you just, like I said, if you're just prepared and kind of do a little bit of thinking ahead of time. So um, I can share some great sources that, you know, we can put on, on the feed for your followers to follow up on. But this is such a simple way to start learning about it. Um, and the Zero Waste Home blog, by the way, from Bia Johnson is a great place to start. That's great. Yeah, please send over those resources. We'll be sure to post them. Thanks so much for that. Yeah. So, you know, before we go, I did want to open things up for Q&A. If anybody had anything that they wanted to ask, um, you know, even if you don't want to say anything out, if you think of something later, you know, just shoot us a line. Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to keep this conversation going. It's, it's so apparent, you know, that uh, <laughs> things are in general a little bit more fragile than I think that than we thought in, in 2020 is certainly uh given us some perspective on that well i think this is a so, subject that is does not really talked about that much yeah you know, we talk a lot about pinterest and how to make the pinterest perfect wedding and you know advice to save money and everything else but there's not much out there for our green friendly brides and grooms i think it's a very imp important subject to talk about um, it definitely helps people like myself who are you know like with flowers flowers can be very wasteful and, you know, um, I, us personally, we try our best to like reuse flowers or just like reuse the plastic or all that little stuff. And after a while, you, you know, we do notice it's like, oh my God, like this is, this is a lot, like what can we do? So this is a very important subject yeah. for not just people who are interested in being greener, but just people who just are getting married and don't realize, oh my God, like I didn't realize that you know, having that arch with this, all these flowers in it that I would need, you know, all this floral foam that gets thrown out and is actually really bad for the environment. And also for brides who are green or brides and grooms that are green friendly, you know, sometimes we don't know how to go about it. It's very um, intimidating because, you know, I would think too that it would cost expensive. I, I would think it would cost a lot to be locally, you know, to get locally farmed um, food or things like that. So it's nice to know that it's not as as terrifying or as hard as you would think. It's just as simple as calling your local farms and just asking them those questions. Um, working with the right vendors, which you know, in every case is very, very important. Um, so yeah, I mean, actually, I'm really happy that you did this. Yes. I really wanted this. I thought you, I, I honestly, Marie, I really do look up to you. I think you're a very smart, edu like educated ambitious woman and you have always been very green friendly and i've always looked up to you for that and i really yes. really do believe that you were the person to like talk about this not only are you an environmentalist and super smart but you also are a bride and already went through this process so it's it's really it's really good so thank you so much thank you yeah i'm so glad to be here and uh to have shared some knowledge i'd say 
for the wedding, just stay creative and stay flexible, guys. There's so many options out there. I definitely spent a lot of time in little thrift stores and antique shops looking for cute little frames and, and different little knickknacks and tchotchkes to use as decoration. And it ended up actually being really cheap and sustainable as well. So um, just spend some time, you know, getting creative with the options and you'll probably find that it's cheaper um, in many cases to be sustainable because even local options, you know, you have to travel less to get them. And so they, they tend to be maybe even a little bit cheaper. So uh, so glad to have been with you guys tonight. And, and I look forward to hearing stories from bride candies who take some of this and implement that into their wedding. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. We love you. Love we'll you guys. Talk. Cheers. Happy Cheers. Wine Wedding Wednesday, you guys. You. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy Cheers. your night. Mm-hmm. <laughs>